I'm your host, Local93. You're joining me for the Academy Chapter 4. We play as Sophia in this chapter. Shut the door to your room and stand with your back to it, trying to process. What just happened? I mean, Charlie is alright, and Sophia seems cool, but Anton and Chloe? The. You play the end of the conversation in your head. At least I stayed off page six for screwing my best friend's mom? Did that crack make things better or worse for me? You look around the room. It's still a shock, all this being here, these people. Your duffel bag looks like a sad pile of rags on the floor. Seeing it makes you wish you could be home. There's your other box by the desk filled with stuff from your old bedroom. Like the computer you built last year. You decide to set it up next to the new laptop you still don't really believe is yours. Man, it makes my beast look like a thousand years old. Laptop gives off an irresistible glow. I should leave it the hell alone. I need to focus on getting myself together for school. I don't even know what all these class abbreviations on my schedule mean. Hey, maybe I can look up those abbreviations on the laptop. Don't be a jerk, Foster. At least tell yourself the truth. You want to check out the laptop? Bad! Can't help running your hand over the machine's sleek top. It feels good. As a computer guy right now, shut up! <laughs> you give in and open it up. It doesn't make a sound. Screensaver appears, a technical-looking schematic with a series of weird symbols on it. You frown at the symbols. They look vaguely familiar. Issued to James Harkin. Links on the screen as it requests a password. Ten bucks is his last name. You type in Harkin and hit enter. Access denied. You type in James and enter. Access denied. Huh. Okay. Let's see what the beast can do. You hook the shiny new laptop to your desktop and open a program that starts running random passwords. By the time I wake up tomorrow, I'll have a new laptop. Climb into bed and your limbs instantly sink into the welcoming softness. All is quiet. The darkness of the room is pierced by the small square of blue light emanating from the computer. God, do I can hate that. Oh, God, I hate the shit out of it. I've used duct tape. I'm serious. I won't, I won't lie. There's a little vague little light in your dark room. No, 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 no. Duct tape is the solution. Random combinations of numbers and letters flit across the screen too fast to read. Suddenly, to a tiny melody rises out of the darkness. It's muffled, but unmistakable. You lift your head off the pillow to hear better. The classical tune stops abruptly. Nothing moves except for the flicker from your desktop computer. You fall into a deep sleep. But morning comes much too soon. The sound of your alarm clock pierces your consciousness like a jackhammer. You glance at the time. What? That makes no sense. Turn towards the window and shield your eyes from the light. I said it for an hour ago. It doesn't matter now. You leap out of bed. First day crap. Absolutely can't be late. Quickly wet down your hair, brush your teeth, find your academic schedule on your phone, and special guest lecture on global impact of Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Student Assembly Hall. Oh, this! You race across the campus and get to the Assembly Hall just before the doors close. You're able to grab the last seat at the back of the hall, right next to Charlie. Way to make an entrance, Foster. I know, overslept. Pull out a binder and pin. What is this, 1985? Where's your laptop? Uh, I left it in my room, but I don't think it's... I'll give you my notes today, but you gotta bring your laptop every day. Seriously. These random questions pop up via messenger, and if you don't respond, you get marked absent. Absent? Even if I'm sitting right here? Charlie nods and taps his temple. Different kind of absent. Okay, that's very big, brother. Welcome to the Academy. Got it. Thanks, man. A swell of applause causes both of you to turn to the front of the class to a haired man who steps up to the podium nodding and smiling. Bill Clinton? Seriously? Charlie laughs. 
He's laughing at me because I'm impressed. Screw it, I am impressed. Forty minutes later, the students give President Clinton a standing ovation. Follow Charlie as he rolls out of the assembly hall. Clinton comes all the way to the academy to give a 40-minute speech to a bunch of students? Uh, sure. He can raise more money for his foundation here. And faster than a hundred fundraisers. All you can do is shake your head. There was no entourage, no bodyguards, nothing to indicate a celebrity of the stature was nearby. Alumni are expected to drop by and talk to students every year, so... It's no big deal, but you'll probably wet your pants. What class do you have next? Check your phone. MMO1? Professor Linden? Oh boy. Charlie's eyebrows fly up. You don't want to be late for that one. Shit, not again. See you at dinner. Well, the map on your phone, see the directions, and start to run. Make it to the classroom as the last bell rings and beeline it to the first empty seat. Grateful for summer football training that got you kind of sort of fit. The man you presume to be Professor Linden enters. The room falls instantly silent. Linden looks at the students like the cat that ate the canary. If your schedule doesn't say medieval military order, 1129-1291, now is the time to leave. No one moves. A high-tech projection glows on the wall behind him. The projected image pops up on everyone's laptop except yours because you don't have it. You sink a little lower in your seat, hoping to go unnoticed. Charlie was right, I have to get the laptop working. You do your best to keep up with the lecture using pen and paper. Oh, Templar Knights in this one too? Ooh. The Templar Knights originally depended on donations to survive, but by 1133 they found themselves beneficiaries of the Christendom's wealth and goodwill. That came all with the occupying a corruption and loss of focus one might expect. Imagine a warring mobile state with a state answerable only to the Pope, with its own standing army. Professor Linden smiles broadly at the idea. Endless possibilities. This guy is way too into this. Professor Linden glances at you and you can't help but flinch a little. What? Why is he looking at me like that? Focus on your notes. It's not like I'm talking out loud. Although, who knows? Maybe they perfected mine reading around in here. In which case, Professor, that is a one sick suit. Must have gotten a bundle. The small smile, Linden turns back to the lesson. <laughs> Could you imagine being able to sit there and just hear anyone's thoughts in the room? Just, that's one sick, sick suit you're wearing, Professor. Ah, oh, thank you, my good chap. Often far from a home and unwilling to trust conventional means of communication, the knights relied on complex set of codes, symbols, glyphs only they understood. While behind Professor Linden lights up with strange symbols, you instantly recognize the symbols from the laptop screensaver. I'm sure you all remember the winner of last year's academic prize, James Harkin. A glass shifts uncomfortably at the mention of James's name. You can't believe it. James Harkin? The guy whose laptop is in my room? You must remember. He read his paper on mathematical analysis on cryptograph algorithms found on the academy campus, didn't you? A dizzying numbers of images flashes on the wall, lighting up Professor Linden's face with an eerie flicker. A devotee, Freemasonry, James decoded Masonic symbols on our campus. He used two of the most basic tools available to us all, a curious intellect and an unyielding work ethic. Theory of Images finally stops on the Academy crest. A dozen questions pop into your head. This is my chance to... Pretend I know nothing and keep my mouth shut. Richard told me to keep my head down. Is this one of those times? Maybe I shouldn't draw attention to myself. Uh, what would I ask, anyway? Maybe I could just ask a question in my head. See what happens. So who was James Harkin? <laughs> Professor Linden nods slightly and begins to answer. You can barely hide your surprise. James Harkin was a junior last year. Well, at the c academy, he proved himself to be a student of immeasurable potential who was 
A loud bell tolls, startling everyone from Mr. Linden to plate slightly. The students quickly close their laptops and nod at the professor. Half the class is out the door before the bell stops. Still trying to play it cool, you're slower putting your papers away. I think Professor Linden isn't glaring at you, but yeah, he is. You with the pencil was your laptop. It, uh, hasn't come yet? Not possible. There's one in my dorm room, but it's password protected. Professor's frown deepens, the silence stretches. That's ridiculous. I am sure the tech services has provided you with all the necessary equipment. Yeah, I guess. I mean, not yet, but... That is not an underfunded suburban high school, Mr... Uh, Peter. Uh, Foster? Nor is this some little Amish schoolhouse we don't write by hand. Uh, yes, sir. Without a laptop, you will not gain access to my course website. You will not receive assignments. You will not be able to uh, follow my lectures and submit your work, and you will fail. Do you understand? Uh, yes, sir. Suddenly, Professor Linden's hand juts out, nearly jabbing you in the chest. Welcome to the Academy. You shake hands. Linden's hand is cold and yet firm. You cannot get out of the classroom fast enough. You can feel the heat of dozens of pairs of eyes following you down the hallway to your next class. That's it. I can't take any more of this. I know, I'll just... Call Zack, actually. He'll talk me down. No, I can't keep depending on other people. I have to deal. If I miss class, they'll probably send out a search party. Suddenly your phone buzzes. You duck inside a small alcove. Maybe there's a signal in this damn place. Hey, foster child. Long time no talk. No kidding. I've been trying to talk to you since I got here. Yeah, I saw. I was in biology, so... Taking a nap, basically. Can't even muster a smile at you. Even miss your old school. Pathetic. I don't know if I'm gonna make it here. What? Did they take your testicles away at the door? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie, it was actually pretty good. <laughs> You unload your crazy stories. Zach can't stop laughing, and soon you're laughing too. You laughing too? Bill Clinton. Did he mention any particular brand of cigars? Oh, yeah, that's right. He, he has a specific cigar he likes so much. I'm serious, Zach. They're so entitled and mean. They go for the juggler and just casual conversation. And they look at me like I'm a science experiment or, well, something. Yeah, but you are. The bell goes off and you sigh. I gotta go. Hang in there, Foster. It can't be that bad. You disconnect and stay put for a second. He's right. Making a big deal out of nothing. It's only my first day. Things have got to get better. Right? You pick up your backpack and trudge to class, still thinking about the laptop. After classes and a five course dinner and the student dining all, you finally make your way back to your room. Your head is swimming with all the new sights, homework assignments, and that don't even make sense yet. You collapse near your desk, chair, exhausted. But the sight of the laptop sparks a new burst of energy. You have your desktop computer and stop. Really? Air. The program is timed out in its attempts to crack the password. Time to go old school. Real old school. Let's see what I can find out about James Harkin. Knock on the wall, you share with Charlie. Come on over. Push open Charlie's door, he's on the floor doing push-ups? Well, that explains the triceps and the vice-like handshake. What's up? You know anything about the guy who had my room last year? Charlie stops and hoists himself up in the chair with surprising speed. He fixes you with a blank stare. Like what? I need his password for the laptop. You have your own laptop. 
I only have the one they issued to James Harkin. I think they just dumped his old hard drive onto this one. You guess? You've used it? I can't use it, Charlie. Now that was password. That's why I'm asking. Charlie seems to relax a fraction. I wouldn't care, but Professor Linden went off on me today. Like it was my fault. Call tech services. I left two messages, but no one picks up. Listen, they should be easy. You knew the guy. Passwords are normally something easy, like, uh, do not touch the laptop until tech services gets here. You're surprised, Charlie's sure getting worked up over nothing. Charlie yanks out his phone like it's burning a hole in his pocket. Sit tight, I'll call. I'll be up here in five minutes. Well, it's stress. I'll just wait until tomorrow. Leave Charlie's room and shut the door. The door cracks back open slightly. Move to close it and spy on Charlie again. I should shut the door quietly. He said he called tech services. Maybe he'll have better luck. I'll just remember not to bother him with anything anymore. I wonder what made him so angry. It's just a silly mistake, right? Four hours later in the dead of night, you're still trying to hack James' laptop. Last thing you want is another confrontation with Professor Linden. I tried all the friends, family angles. I, maybe it's time to start on hobbies and pets? Lean back in your chair and stare out at the spires and towers of magnificent school. Then it dawns on you. Wait a minute. Log on to the Academy website, which is full of photos. Smiling people, beautiful buildings, some of which you recognize. In minutes, you find what you're looking for as an award-winning student essay section. Mathematical analysis of cryptographic algorithms found on Academy campus. The title ba page bears the same symbols as the ones on the screensaver. Bingo. You ran out the page and hold up to the closet door, aligning the symbols. The four points on one of the correspond to the engraved numbers on the closet door. You write them down. 42, 54, 72, 61. Okay. Type in the numbers and let your fingers have a, a moment over the keys. Please don't say access denied. You then press enter. Or return. It's normally called enter anymore, but sure, return. Symbols glow and slowly fade. You leap from your chair. Yes! A quick victory dance, a sigh, and a glance at the clock. It's 3 a.m. Okay, laptop secured. Now for a couple hours sleep. Feeling pretty good, you start to brush your teeth. Or it's definitely going to be a better day. If only because... You're interrupted by the sound of a voice in the room with you. My name is James. James Harkin, actually. You freeze your toothbrush poised. You didn't hear a door open. The hell? Your eye catches the laptop screen. A face you've never seen before is talking to you. Leaning close, can he see you? If you're watching this, I I'm probably dead. Your toothbrush falls to the floor. You realize you're watching a recording. So, okay, I'm, I'm dead. Are you listening? Whoever you are, James Harkin appears pale and shaky. Obviously on drugs. Or really, really scared. And it wasn't an accident, if that's what they're telling you. I was killed to cover up the truth about the Academy. Holy shit. Oh, God. Brought to you by an advertisement. <sighs> With that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And now, description below, links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. And without further ado, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace!